Sugar's Magic Circus, <laughs> where old people come to talk. God's waiting room. God's waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> hell, hell, yeah. So what's up? I know uh, you got mail. You always got mail. Yeah, we There's got mail. Of it. I want to do something first. Uh, just a shout out for those of you who may know. Uh, Bob, Daddy Wags Wagner, passed away this week. A very old and dear friend, prior enlisted uh, Vietnam vet. And got his commission, force recon guy, super stud, well respected throughout the community, just uh, and a very dear friend, and I'm heartbroken. So just a, sh a shout out for Bob. Uh, Except for five, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. And with that, Bob always appreciated humor. He always had this crooked smile on his face. He used to crack me up. This week's letter is very interesting. There we go. We got so many. Here she is. We got a letter from a concerned mother, hmm. of all things. And she won't let me use her name in this thing. She goes on and on. But the upshoot is this. Uh, dear sirs, my son Maximilian, <laughs> the drill instructor's going to have a blast at this. <laughs> my son Maximilian recently joined the Marine Corps, and I'm extremely worried. That's, okay, I got you. Uh, what if something were to happen to my poor Maximilian? Your handwriting sucks. What if something <laughs> were to happen to my poor Maximilian while he's in boot camp? Is there anyone there to take care of him? Are there trained doctors and other such individuals to make sure my baby Maximilian does not get hurt and comes home to me in one piece? Wow. Well, listen. <laughs> I mean, listen, anonymous lady, we got a good show for you today because we have a really uh, a good guest, right? Chad Hansen, we call him Doc, mm -hmm. is a Navy corpsman. Absolutely. And we thought, this is our 30th mm -hmm. episode, this is the perfect episode to answer this latest question. Yeah. And talk about the relationship between the Marine Corps and the Navy when it comes to docs, who are an integral part of any infantry unit. Really yeah. every unit, but, but specifically infantry. And we love them and guard them at yeah. every turn. They so, so what is a corpsman? Tell us. I think I'm going to go uh, to Major H.G. Duncan for the definition of a corpsman, because I just thought this was a very good definition. All right, you ready? Corman, <clears throat> usually a young, long-haired, bearded, marine-hating sailor with certain <laughs> medical skills who will go through the very gates of hell to get a wounded marine. That's pretty good. That's that, it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that works. That's the definition right there. <laughs> so welcome, Chad. Well, Doc. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Yeah. I took my Motrin. I changed my socks. <laughs> I drank my water. We're yeah. good. I, I'm set. <laughs> You've cured COVID right there. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that, that is the cure for everything. You know, if it's below the body, you change your socks. If it's above the body, you take the Motrin and just hydrate and you're set. Yeah, that's awesome. So but, tell us, Chad, how did you end up, uh, where are you coming from and how did you end up joining the Navy? Well, it's uh, kind of a long, weird story, hey, right? Well, you know, to the long, weird know. story show. Yeah. Um, that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I grew up... Uh, always wanted to come in in the service you know both my folks were air force so you know i already had that higher education and finer points of life right there <laughs> um and uh keith hates the air force i don't know if you know that you know i, I think he I, says it every single show at some point yeah, they have the finest hotels and the best golf courses out there <laughs> um and the greatest chow it's halls about standard, add, it's about but, standards of living yeah sure. it really is uh but you know, always grew up respecting the military, loving the military. Had that nice, fantastic movie, Navy SEALs, coming out back in the 80s. And, God you know, you. every one of the greatest recruiting movies you could ever yeah. ask for, you know, for little kids. And uh, you just grew up always wanting to do that. And life goes on. One thing happens after another. And graduate high school. Go on a mission for my church for two years, and I'm gone come back and I just kind of get to working and rock climbing and girls and just forget all about the service yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden uh, you know September 11th has happened mm -hmm. Iraq's starting to kick off and my little brother is in the army and he's there for the invasion uh. and uh, I can't let my little brother go alone mm -hmm. so I show up to the recruiter and I say hey I want to go in but I want to be a corpsman because I, I want to take care of people, but I want to go with Marines and I want to go to Iraq right now. And 
by the time he picked his jaw up off the floor, figured <laughs> out, you know, I'm, I'm not a nut, I'm not, you know, I'm not some kind of crazy, or, you know, yeah. uh, I became his best friend, and he's, you know, here's the papers, here's a steak dinner, and, you know, off I go. And so December of uh, 2003, you know, I'm heading off to Chicago in a blizzard, the Great Lakes. And... Yeah. <laughs> Excellent place for boot camp. So happy they got away with the San Diego one. Oh, right? <laughs> but, yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, so boot camp, A school. Yeah, boot camp, A school, which is right across the street there in Great Lakes. Yep, yeah. uh, I think they've sw- since switched it down to San Antonio. And just combined all the, the all schools the together. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how how long is the school? Tell us a little bit about the school. And then is there like a civilian equivalent that people would understand, like to be in a corpsman like out in the in Yeah, the so so school's about four months long, or was it at the time? I yeah. I'll be honest, I don't know how long they they switched it to now, but yeah. time is about four months. And it's basically like a an EMT advanced school. Okay. Uh, you learn a lot of the basic life-saving skills mm-hmm. on what you do on an ambulance uh, and what you do in, in a basic hospital setting mm-hmm. uh, on a ward, how to take care of patients in a bed, how you take care of patients in different levels of the wards from everything from a psych ward to labor and delivery, yeah. how to assist the nurses, how to assist the doctors, and I'll be honest, sometimes how to do some of the procedures better than some of the nurses and doctors yeah you know, like giving the IVs and yeah. things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know, for instance, like they'd call us in to give IVs and things to, to the neonatals, to the babies. Oh, really? Uh, because for some reason, we had a lot more practice because we like to stick each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we were the guinea pigs. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'd practice on each other a lot. That's true. I mean, it's a great skill to have. Yeah, so, well, we have talked about this at... I had all I had an entire company of recon kids on the basketball court one afternoon stabbing each other. Yeah. And the colonel comes by and says, Keith, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, Doc's teaching the men how to give each other IVs. Why? Because they're 20 miles behind enemy lines and yeah. somebody gets dinged. Doc's not there. And he's an old Vietnam recon guy. He's like, good. Good plan. Yeah, well done. It is. I'm like, okie dokie. <laughs> and what my idea was a Doc's idea. Yeah. Doc goes, hey, sir, this is what we need to know. And I thought, that's goddamn brilliant. So you're right, you guys, not old, but they teach us yeah. Yeah. as well. So there's four things that you really need to think about in warfare. It's shoot, move, communicate, medicate, yeah. right? Yeah. So how did you how did you guys go from like learning how to be EMT-like and hospital setting to learning about how to deal with you know combat injuries and that golden hour and, and getting people to stay alive yeah. as you get them on the You know, don't sh- sell yourself short because Doc's been through every school there is. Yeah. So tell us how that progression goes and, and how and why. And you ended up in Marsoc and the whole nine yards. Yeah. So as soon as we left there, especially because Iraq's going on and it's really starting to, to pick up now. And uh, it's about 2004, mid-2004 at this time. And they send almost, well, all the males off. And we go off to Camp Pendleton and we go to uh, FMSS at the time, which Field is now down. like... FMTB, I think, Field okay. Medical Service School, and now yeah. it's Field Medical Training Battalion, yep, okay. I think. Yep. And that's where, honestly, that's where I, I felt boot camp really started for me. <laughs> okay. You know, because Navy boot camp, it's a lot of not tying and learning how to fight fires and survive on ship. But yeah. uh, Field Medical Service School, now you've got a Marine Sergeant and you've got an HM2, which is... Uh, E5, a sergeant yeah. equivalent in the Navy, and they're giving you the business, and they're teaching you how to shoot, move, and communicate with Marines, how to wear the equipment, how mm-hmm. to not only save the lives of Marines, but how, one, not to look stupid being with <laughs> Marines, because that's not something you want to do, <laughs> yeah. but how not to cause further damage with the Marines, how Mm -hmm. not to get them into trouble when the enemy's around, you know, because you don't want to create those problems to begin with. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's where you really learn those skills and take that hospital setting into that field setting, Mm -hmm. learning how to 
do bandages while people are, are shooting at you, how to move the patient, mm -hmm. you know, from a dirty environment where he just got blown up out and around from from a dangerous spot to a non-dangerous spot and, 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 you know, and, and put Band-Aids on. The, the yeah. dirty part is the interesting yeah. part. The, yes. the filth involved in a combat zone is something the average person can not ever, and you don't even know it yeah. until yeah. you go, you find yourself in a clean space and you go, holy shit. Well, look, man, uh, uh, like in the movies, right? Like to, most people, that's their only reference is to yeah. watch the movies, yeah. right? So in the movies, when they show a, a mortar round or an artillery round go off or something like that, right, or an ID, that's a controlled explosion, right? It's a it's a package sitting on top of the ground. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you see this beautiful smoke cloud and like flames. some fl yeah. flames going out. The reality is these things hit in the dirt. Yeah. And they blow up and it blows up pieces of rock and dirt. And those become part of the debris that becomes part of the injury. Yeah, so exactly. I mean, when you talk about dirty, I mean, the wounds themselves are, are pretty... They're, they're, they're egregious. And, and yeah. you know, and any other detritus that's laying around yeah. is now in that wound. Yeah. yeah. And that, and oh, by the way, somebody's trying to kill Doc while he's trying to get this guy. Oh, right. totally, yeah. 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 Oops. You know, and, and that's just it. A lot of Docs, that's how they end up getting killed, unfortunately, is yeah. by yeah. saving our Marines or trying to save our yeah. Marines. Yeah. Corbin um, up. I mean, that's been that's, a call in the Marine Corps from the very beginning, right? Yeah. yeah. All through World War One, World War Two. Yeah. Yeah. Korea, Vietnam. That's that's the big saying is, you know, they Marine call us and then they call yeah. mom. Yeah. 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 But the beauty of it is, is that corpsman is so embedded in that squad platoon company, he knows every kid in there, he knows their foibles, their problems. Oh yeah. You know, Jones's kids got pneumonia. Smith broke mm -hmm. a leg two years ago. I get to keep an eye on that, and they know everything that's going on in that unit. Which is why when we go drinking at night and we take the corpsman with us, <laughs> we protect him <laughs> as though right. we were a gold bar. <clears throat> and and that's just it. You know, we love our Marines, and. My mother loves my Marines because <laughs> my Marines took care of me. Yeah. You know. So after that school. Right. So after that school, right, then I get shipped off to Okinawa. And <laughs> I didn't get into the fight right away. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. They, they sent me off to field service support group. Okay. And a uh, little disappointed at first, but I'll be honest, it was actually a great unit. Yeah. Uh because I got to go see every single natural disaster in that part of the world, hmm. which seemed to happen every other week. Right. Yeah. Uh, everything from tsunamis mm -hmm. to uh, earthquakes to mudslides. And I got to learn a lot of the logistics part of what it takes to move, not just the individual like myself and what I need for extended times out in the field, taking care of, you know, a squad, a platoon, maybe even a company, but also what I would need to take, you know, to move an entire company or something mm -hmm. of that size. Mm -hmm. And so that would, you know, later on as I got down further in my career in Marsoc and all that would really play, you know, a huge hand in yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, so I, I spent a year there, uh, which at the time unaccompanied, they were given out just one year orders mm -hmm. and thankfully just one year orders. <laughs> um, and I left there and I, I went to first Marine division and immediately was put on a team and Hey, you're going to Iraq. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I couldn't high five the master chief. Fast enough. <laughs> um, yeah. So who were you with? Uh, so when I went to Iraq, it was actually with a one of the transition teams out on a border. Yep. And at the time, they had no concept of what they were doing with it. Like it was a brand new deal. They were they were just starting to bring back. This yeah. was two thousand five. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. End of two thousand five, early two thousand six, and and they had started doing like the. Uh, the MIT teams, the military transition yeah. teams, and, and the police transition teams, and mm -hmm. things like that. But nothing as far as, like, out on the border. Mm -hmm. You know, I, Iran was bringing some things in. They were bringing stuff across the borders and to Jordan and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, so they kind of gave us just carte blanche to, hey, here's, here's your guys. 
pick your own training. You know, whatever you guys want, just don't you love go, when they do that? Go, go to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so we'd write our own own scorecard on what we'd want to do. Go, sure. Go down to the uh, San Ysidro Border Patrol and do whatever they were doing, yeah. or tactical driving out this place, or foreign weapon shoots, or mm-hmm. just all sorts of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, but we went out there and we ended up spending a year. <clears throat> And in that year, I ended up being on about four teams, uh, just due to injuries and other things out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just kept rotating around, and that was actually my first opportunity to work as an independent duty corpsman. Mm. Now, that, that's a that's a whole other class of human, an, an IDC. Yeah. What is an independent duty corpsman? Can you tell? Yeah. Tell so, something? independent duty corpsman uh, is basically a corpsman that has a higher level of training almost almost to the level of a physician's assistant okay they're a uh yeah a, a non non-doctor if you will but they do a whole lot they can do some minor surgeries they mm-hmm. can do narcotics they work under the supervision of a medical doctor however they are so far removed like that, physically, geographically, like physically, right? geographically yeah. removed. <clears throat> a lot of times we don't even have communications, at least where I was working with, with Marsoc and things like that. Yeah. Sometimes communications may be a day, a week, however long. And that's why it's so away. important that the IDC is so highly trained yeah. right. because they're out there alone and unafraid, and that's it, and everybody's relying on you because there is yeah. no medical help. Well, now that's it's interesting you say that because I'm, I'm going to make help you make a transition and tell tell us about how you would train them people you work with to do the things that you do because a, good, a really good yeah. a good corpsman is going to do that right yeah. you yeah. should be managing the site and managing what's happening and not mm-hmm. necessarily being the only guy yeah. who's Absolutely. taking care of all the guys yeah you should be telling or you should be you should have your guys trained to the point where yeah they can do it and that was my big thought is something happens to me i want somebody taking care of me yeah sure. so i want to teach my guys you know how how to do that stuff mm-hmm. yeah, at sure. least the very basics on you know how to stop the bleeding how to how to splint up a broken bone mm-hmm. and so we we train all the time while we're out on the range as we're doing the shoots and things you know i'm, I'm telling whoever's in charge or whatever hey at some point you know, I'm going to introduce an injury somewhere, you know, and we're going to do it at a, at a safe point or yeah. something. I'm not yeah, going to, right. you know, create chaos into right. the training, but we're going to create some... Because there's enough already. But, but we're going to create <laughs> yeah. some kind of chaos, you know, and uh, and it's going to be, everybody's going to learn how to put on their own tourniquet, yep. you mm-hmm. know, because at some point somebody's going to be far removed and... You're gonna to have to put on your own turn. Yeah, because so nobody can get to you. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I I was teaching my guys how to give each other IVs, but also how to do it themselves. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, that's always a fun deal trying to, you know, stab yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but Shit hurts. You know, and you keep it in the simplest terms because not everybody needs to be, you know, spouting off Latin in medical terms. <laughs> but you know, blood's blood. Teach them how to fix themselves. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So then what happened? So, do a year out there. Uh, lost some guys. Saw you know saw my first serious injuries and mm-hmm. things like that and real world uh, stuff and it, and it taught me a lot of lessons because at that point I hadn't actually been to IDC school. I'm, I'm a third class petty officer. Yeah. And they've thrown me into this independent duty position, and I'm realizing. I don't know nearly, mm. I have all the confidence in the world, but I don't know nearly as much as I need to know, uh-huh. or I think I should know, yeah. to, to do this job. So yeah. I, I come back, and I've got about six months left in, in First Marine Division before I, it's time to PCS somewhere, and they, they send me over to 11th Marine Regiment to help kind of rebuild the, re- the regimental aid station, mm-hmm. which was which was fun. I yeah, got so to they shoot had some the Artie guns, guys. In, they're doing foot patrols now. Right. So their casualty rates are going up, and they're not 
as exactly. adept at it as the grunts are. Let's be honest. Yeah. Because they don't. It's a secondary mission. Yeah. Exactly. And so now you're basically back right straight into the mix. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, again, throwing chaos to the wind and everything. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do that for a few months and then then they PCS me and they throw me to uh, NECC, the Naval Expeditionary Combat Command. So now I'm down in San Diego, down in Imperial Beach, doing small boat work. Hmm. My old stomping ground. Yes. Right. <laughs> I, and I love it. It It's uh, taking like care birding of, cats. Taking care of jellyfish stings and freaking <laughs> sunburns. You know, um, broken arms and legs yeah. and flipping boats yeah. in a 10-foot surf. I'm yeah. wearing, <laughs> uh, you know, wearing UDTs and uh, t shirts and, 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 and yeah. it, um, loving life sitting on the back of a boat mm. and at the same time i'm having to deal with big blue water navy which <laughs> god bless you you go from greenside marine corps to blue water navy and <laughs> you just want to fall in the drink and not come back up someday. <laughs> but there were a lot of really great guys out there that really wanted to to do the job mm -hmm. But the reason they were bringing me down and, and several other of the guys from up at Division <clears throat> were the only guys that had any combat experience at mm -hmm. NECC were the corpsmen. Yeah. Hmm. Bosun's yeah. mates don't have a whole no. lot of yeah, that makes sense. combat experience. Yeah. And, and the way the coastal warfare and the riverine patrols were going is yeah. part of the mission was to learn how to do ground combat patrols up to a certain point on shore yeah and so they brought us down to kind of dual hat that and <coughs> teach these patrols have that experience mm -hmm. but also you know be corpsman was yeah. this part of the naval infantry battalion exper like experiment? yeah that, that, that experiment for yeah. that brief okay. little where is the high water mark so yep. to speak yeah yep. and yep. that's transition well we always laugh because we're like yeah the navy already has an infantry battalion <laughs> it's called the marine corps what do you do we're in the department of the navy stop it that, but, <laughs> and that's why we wanted to yeah drown ourselves in the ocean so it, uh, we, we tried to explain that but like I said, we, we had some great guys. My skipper down there, uh, Commander Glover, great guy. He wanted to come out on patrols with us and just, just put me in the back of the patrol. Okay, sir, but I'm going to treat you just like everybody else. And you'd see him back there, you know, doing all this stuff. <laughs> what are you doing, sir? Well, I'm, you know, I'm trying to just stop. You, you just, you know. Uh, but but great guy because he just wanted to learn. He, he flat yeah, out tell you. You gotta love him. <clears throat> you know, I, I have no idea. I'm a nuclear engineer off of an aircraft carrier. I have no idea what I'm doing out here. You guys make me look good and do the job right, yeah. and I will take care of you and bend over backwards. And that's exactly what he did. Nice. You know, he's he's the kind of leader yeah. that, that you want for something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, so I, I did that for just almost three years and then the opportunity came up to actually go to idc school nice okay. yeah the actual formal school there at uh at balboa how long is that that's a year-long school okay and that kind of takes it like a three-year pa program yeah uh you know not the the full four-year program but mm -hmm. the, the three year and throws it down into a year which and the military is brilliant at doing of taking four years of college and cramming it into yeah. nine or twelve yeah. months well, they, it's true, but you got to remember, too, uh, and we've talked about this a mm. bunch of times, co college is a business. Yeah. And so they well, add keep a lot of things to your curriculum that are unnecessary because it makes you it makes them more money if you stay there longer. Exactly. So a lot of times if you start stripping out all the crap, you end up with the core competency And you crunch the day. Yeah. And you crunch the day, so you work longer you know, days. You don't go to two classes twice a week. Right, exactly. You're working, you know, 0, 0730 to 18, 1900, yeah. and then homework. Have a nice day. Yeah. Get so you phone. can actually compress these programs down sure. and get somebody to the level of competency that you need much quicker than colleges do. Yeah. Well, you know, at Marsa, we've had that discussion with professors from North Carolina universities have come in, well, this is impossible, you can't teach this curriculum, yeah, we do. <clears throat> well, how do you do that? They're, how can they do it? I said, well, we told them to. And they kind of look at you, what do you mean? We, we just told the Marines to do it. That they have to do That's it. That's it. And they do it. <laughs> yeah. It's not rocket science. There's it's no not. choice. You do it. Yeah. 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 And so, expectation is important. Yeah. If you, if you raise the bar, they'll right. rise to it. That's yeah. right. So, that, so 
pretty intense course at Balboa, so you didn't have yeah. a geo move, which is great. You're still right. in California. Still right there. Got to ride over the bridge every, every day. day. Love it. <laughs> um, especially on the bike, you can split lanes out there, uh, and, you know, you, you know, wave into the porches and things that are stuck in traffic. <laughs> yes. But yeah, it, it was an intense course. Uh, we started out uh, just north of 100 kids in the class, and we graduated... I want to say 23 and oh, four shit. of those, five of those were rollbacks okay. from a previous class. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, it's like drinking from a fire hose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, four or five tests a week. Yeah. And it's from everything from, you know, just basic anatomy and physiology to, you know, the, the nervous system to how to treat everything from common colds to nuclear medicine you know touching briefly on little things mm -hmm. here and there and really in depth on other little things a lot of hands-on training and a lot of administrative training because mm -hmm. like they tell you on day one is you could kill somebody as long as you do the paperwork right it's yeah. gonna happen because yeah. unfortunately it's medicine People are, are going to pass no matter what you do. Yeah. But as everything in government, you have to document mm -hmm. and you have to document it right. Right. <clears throat> um, Interesting. But, you know, our job is we do everything possible every single time to, to save the lives of our, our Marines, our sailors, and, yeah. and we yeah. will. We'll, we'll do it nonstop. Talk so. about the golden hour. Uh, so the golden hour, from, from the moment you get hurt, you know, you've got one hour, you know, basically to, to get them into hospital care and to, mm -hmm. to start treating them. Yeah. And uh, you pro try to prolong that time as long as possible. Yeah, you fight, fight the demons off until you can get a medevac yeah. in or some, some mechanism to get the guy on. Yeah. And that's a, that's a fairly new concept, the golden hour. But everybody lives by it now. Yeah, everybody yeah. understands now and the lowest private knows what the golden hour is and how important it is that direct medical attention and yeah. get them out. You got to get them out. No. So it's about what? It's triage, right? It's identifying yeah. what's going on. Yeah. You got to get prioritize your patients. Yeah. And I tell you, that's probably the hardest part sometimes because you see something and some things <clears throat> look worse than others. And sometimes it's the things that, that don't look that bad. That are the worst things mm -hmm. out there, mm -hmm. uh, and you know you've got guys that are freaking out because this looks horrible. Yeah, you got any but examples? This of is the guy. Uh, probably one of the biggest ones I saw, and and it, this was really a, a horrible time for us. Uh, watch, watch the kid; he got hit in the back of the neck where we got hit pretty hard, and. Uh, a round came up and up through his neck and his face and he, he was he was going he was going pretty hard um, and needed to work on him pretty bad a couple other guys had gotten hurt but he was the one that really needed to work on mm. and knew that if he made it it wasn't going to be much of a life mm -hmm. But a lot of it, too, working on him was, one, I'm not giving up on a guy. Yeah. And, and none of us were. There there actually happened to be four of us in the FOB at the time. It just it, it was just one of those. Yeah. None of us were ever at the FOB ever. And Marine Corps birthday, and we just happened uh, to all be there wow. at the time. Yeah. What was the issue? Could you, couldn't get an airway? Or? Uh, couldn't get an airway. Couldn't get the IV lines started. Mm -hmm. Veins were collapsing and everything. And uh, again, he just, the blood pressure and everything kept dropping. And, you know, I ended up doing CPR on him for over an hour, mm -hmm. which if you've ever done it before, within 10 minutes, you're, you're just exhausted. exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. And, and ended up doing it on him for over an hour. Uh, you know, we, we did some uh, some new techniques at the time, which fortunately now are pretty standard. You know, mm -hmm. doing some IVs actually down into the bone and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, opened up his throat and everything. Yeah. Put an airway in. And, mm -hmm. you know, some stuff that is a third class was just, 
a big decision and saying, hey, yeah. I, I really need a lot more <coughs> yeah, you're training for, for tricks, confidence tricks, here. Yeah. Yeah, which... Oh, come on, I watch the movies. You just can make a little slice and right? put a pen, piece put of a pen, pen in there. Yeah. Put your pen I, in. I watched them do it on MASH once. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and I hate to say it, you know, later on, I've gotten a lot more experience, a lot more reward experience, yeah. but doing it the, that first time, it's something that never leaves you. Yeah, I'm sure. But you learn from it, and you really grow and you use that as as teaching experiences mm-hmm. when you when you meet new guys when you meet you know your marines and you start teaching them about hey this is why we do it this is why we put tourniquets on the right way you know why yeah. you don't play around when we're training yeah with this stuff mm-hmm. because when that tourniquet breaks you got to learn how to put it on again or you got to learn you know this is how you really tighten it down. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And there, people think it's easy. It's, not, it's a real art to do in that career. <coughs> yeah. It takes practice. It, it does. It does. You know. And, uh, but I left school, and I automatically realized I know a whole lot less than I, I really thought I did. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, more you, the more you learn, the more the you more realize you don't know. Yeah. yeah. So true. Yeah. But, but you... you the greatest gift they gave us was realizing that there's a whole network of people you can ask mm-hmm. and you know where to go to find those answers or how to kind of play Sherlock Holmes. You know, they give you the formula to find okay. the answers. Sure. And <clears throat> and that probably saved my butt more times than anything is, mm-hmm. okay, well, I can start at point A and I can work my way to Z, mm-hmm. and if that doesn't work, well, I'll come to number one and work my way to 50. Yeah. Uh, but I leave there, and I go over to MARSOC, over to 3rd Raider Battalion. Yeah. Well, 3rd MSOB at the time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and that was actually kind of a, I don't want to say a fluke, but it was being at the right place at the right time with the right people. Uh, because as an SF IDC, as a surface force IDC, we were actually kind of band-aids. Uh, usually, as typical, they have an 8403, which is a recon IDC. Mm-hmm. So a, a SARC is an 8427, mm-hmm. a Special Amphibious Reconnaissance Corpsman, who then becomes a recon IDC and stays with, with the recon battalions and, and force or then on to, and to Marsoc. We should probably just touch on that for a second mm-hmm. because now that corpsman with all his advanced skill sets is now with either reconnaissance, force reconnaissance, or Marsoc. He's doing everything they're doing. He's mm-hmm. going to jump school. He's going to dive school. He's, he, he's an integral part of that team. He's a member of that team. Yeah. So now you have a guy who joined the Navy to become a corpsman thought he was going to be handing out thermometers in the hospital. <laughs> X number of years later, he's jumping out of airplanes mm-hmm. and he's about two classes short of being a physician. And he's got kind of experience. You're more marine than you ever are sailor. Yeah. 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 And that's that's something people out there in TV land, think about that for a second, get your arms around that. Mm-hmm. So I, go ahead, yeah. I'm sorry. No, no. That, I mean, that's the fantastic point about it. Yeah. And, and that kind of gives that leeway to us where, so you've got your recon IDCs, and then here's our SF IDCs, our 8425s, which were was what I was. Mm -hmm. And the problem is when MARSOC stood up, there weren't enough recon IDCs to Mm -hmm. go with both recon and MARSOC. Mm -hmm. And especially with third standing up and third (coughs) already, from the time they stood up, they were, hey, you guys are out the door and you're already starting to to push out to to missions and Mm -hmm. and do all this. Mm -hmm. And we need (coughs) IDCs to go. So they they took some SF IDCs and they said, well, you guys have, you've been to Iraq, you've done some of this, we're going to take you over here and we're going to start putting you through the pipeline with these teams. This is before ITC and all, right. all that. Yeah. And you're basically OJT and you're either going to sink or swim. Mm-hmm. And... Welcome to Special yeah. Operations. Yeah, right. That's it. Yep. Have you a know, nice day. <laughs> you, you, you make it or you don't. Yep. Yeah. And so out of, 
you figure roughly there's 20-ish IDCs at, at the battalion or yeah. so and another, I don't know, 10, 15 SARCs or so out there. Mm. Over the years, from the beginning of, of MARSOC to now, there's been maybe 20 of us SF IDCs that have I've got to have gotten through like that. Jeez, that's cool. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, and and it's we're tough. we're just kind of that anomaly, that yeah. that band aid that they needed to to come over, mm-hmm. and kind of a forgotten little piece sometimes mm-hmm. overlooked, but very blessed to be at the right place at the right time, and then to be you know accepted into the community, and. Uh, and fortunate to be able to go out with my heroes and and take care of them. Yeah. So, so where where do you guys go? Uh, mostly my I was down south a lot. That was that was my big area down south. Uh, and then also Paycom, Southeast Asia. Um, when you say down south, what do you mean? Down south, like Brazil, oh. South America. Yeah. All yeah. People area. forget about old sleepy old South. Yeah. Colorado. And as, you know, everybody forgets unless you're the guys doing it, that even the war is going on, the rest of this shit doesn't stop. That's right. Yeah. All the other bullshit, in and out of Africa, in and out of uh, Central America, in and out of South America, it never stops. And guys, you know, why is the divorce rate so high? Well, you know, I just spent three years in a combat zone, came home, unpacked, and got orders, you're going down south now. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it happens. Well, that was my big thing. My, my first, what, three years there? Mm-hmm. I think I was home maybe, I don't know, 60 days out of each year with mm-hmm. my head on my actual pillow. Yeah. yeah. You know, it wasn't that I was out of the country the whole time, but it was, you know, you're you're out of the country for a month, you're back for two or three months, but you're off at this school. Yeah. You're doing... Yeah. You're going to Dodge Soup. You're going you know, to Jump Master. You're, yeah. All that shit never stops. You know, and or you're traveling to it, or you're doing <laughs> this, that, or the other, or you're... Right out here in the Croatan, just sleeping, eating bugs and snakes and whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your apartment turns into basically a storage unit. Yeah. Um, but it it was some of the greatest time and definitely the greatest people I've yeah. ever had the pleasure of, of serving with. Yeah. So down south, a lot of uh, working with partner nation yeah. forces, trying to train them up. Uh, yeah. To do things within their own country. Yeah. yeah. Without getting too detailed. <laughs> Without getting too and, detailed. Uh, yeah. And then your component of that, did you do? It, did you get to train folks in their own in, in on medical like yeah. type things while you were down there? Interestingly, like that becomes problematic in the sense that like we are used to having a lot of stuff, a lot of equipment. We get money, we get good first aid kits, and all yeah. that stuff. How did you find that our partner nations were <laughs> when it came to equipping their men to survive in those it, types of environments? It was, it, you know, it was a flip of the coin. Uh, One country would be amazing, yeah. you know, and and they could almost write a blank check for uh-huh. anything, and and some of their equipment was even. I'm going to say better than ours, like they'd get some cool stuff that like our FDA just wouldn't approve yet. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And you'd be like, hey, can, I, can I get some of that stuff? Yeah. And then other countries, you know, you're, you're using <clears throat> voodoo jungle medicine. Yeah. And even some of that's kind of cool, but <laughs> yeah. like, you know, it is. Like, that's well, cool for you. I, I don't know if I want to try it on me, but yeah. you know. Yeah. But, but that's that, another thing Mr. and Mrs. America don't get. I mean, Doc and I were laughing about this the other night. We were at bike, bike night together, and uh, we're standing outside the sports shooting shit about motorcycles. And we were talking about the show, and, and uh, I went down into uh, in Uganda. And it's the first place I was ever at where, like, if you get anything, any hurt, any boo-boo at all, you're on the first helo out. And it's small team stuff. And you're like, well, we got guys. No, no, no. You can't, you can't have any blood out of this country. There's not a sterile yeah. Band-Aid in this entire... <laughs> country so you got to go yeah, many times you got to go yeah. and they had heels on standby yeah to get us back up into germany which was weird and you know you just don't think about that all right i dock with me i can manage yeah. but in some places you're like no no <clears throat> doc and you were both out if it happens yeah, <laughs> yeah like we, we were down in this one country and i can't say the name of it but 
they bring me this guy and you know he's all bandaged up and everything and yeah. dude, fantastic job i mean this is like trauma level hospital bandaging and everything and i'm like you know where did where did you get this done and the guy's pointing at this other guy well he did it come to find out the guy that did it you know he's the town doctor mm -hmm. but he's a botanist he's oh. a tree doctor <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. The best doctor out here is a tree doctor, and he, he's doing fantastic. You know, compound fractures and all this, and the guy's bandaging the muscle like bones, trees. Yeah, yeah the same you thing know, it's all similar. Good. Cut it in, you stick the thing in there, wrap it up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Well, I was uh, training down in French Guiana, South America, um, for jungle survival school with the French Foreign Legion. And we were doing a... Did I tell the story already? When the tree fell? No, no, no. This is the one where um, we're just doing like live fire stuff. Like yeah. we go to the French Foreign Legion. We're like, okay, we want to go to the range today and, and like throw hand grenades and shoot. And they're like, okay, goodbye. <laughs> and we're like, what do you mean goodbye? Where is it? You got to give us directions. Like, oh, the jungle is the range. Go. <laughs> There's no one. There's no one. No one's here. Go find a spot. <laughs> right, okay. So we did a little patrol. We did dog leg. We got into our position. We set up claymores. We blew claymores. And, you know, we Cracks in a compromise, yeah. you know, compromise hindsight. Yeah. Blow the claymores run, right? So I make the cardinal mistake and I step on the log instead of jumping, jumping over, over the log. log. And I did. I twisted that ankle up, man. It was it was a it was a significant sprain. Yeah. Right. I didn't know at the time. I thought I broke. I heard the boot crunch and everything, you know. Well, where are we? We're out in the middle. Of, we had taken canoes down the freaking river, <laughs> right? We're two hours from a city. Where we were like. 40 minutes from the base camp. Yeah. So now it's like, how do we get? So, you know, we had Doc with us and everything, but they literally had to carry me out, get me on the canoe, take the canoe back. And they, all they could do out there was like stabilize it. Yeah. And then they got me and drove me the two hours back to town where we went to a French hospital. And the French guy was like, yes, we have to do surgery. And my team leader was like, oh, Doc. And the team leader <laughs> were there. They were like, no, this is not happening here. <laughs> so cast it. So they cast it. And I got a picture over there somewhere of me sitting down there in South America with my slick greens on and my foot up in a cast. <laughs> I'll pop it up on the screen. We have to operate. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, no. You know, because like you said, if you leave, Doc's going with you. Yeah. And and he marshaled me all the way back and, and ended up, it, it was a, a, I think, was it, what's worse, first or third degree sprains? Oh, Whatever yeah. the worst one was. There was separation and stuff. Yeah. It wasn't Not good. good. So nothing was broken. <laughs> that still clicks really good now. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. It just made me think of that. You were talking about yeah. being down in South America. And it's like you, the worst thing that can happen to you is you get hurt it's when you're hurt. out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And you're like, it's otherworldly so many places. I mean, you know, Africa is <clears> the worst. And having been in and out of there a million times. And so many places are... People that sort of, they have no frame of reference, you know. But it's on TV. I saw Africa on TV. It, it, you can't even begin to scratch the surface of the fifth century that you're living in down there. Yeah. Well, I can't tell you that. And you talk to folks that well, I've been there, well, but you went to a resort somewhere. Right. Yeah. You, you yeah. haven't seen Africa. You haven't no. seen going to South, South Africa. America. You haven't yeah. seen. Yeah. I've been to South you Africa. Know. It's beautiful. No, that's not what we're talking about here. Yeah. You know when you went to Jamaica and you took left the airport to go to your <laughs> place and you saw like the fires going yeah. and like, people like running around yeah. with machine guns and stuff. It's more like that. <laughs> Let me take you to Thailand. Let me show you <laughs> what's kept me, Thailand, you know, yeah. employed for all these years. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God! Marines in Thailand, like that'll keep a dock in port for a <laughs> lifetime. So that's funny, and that's actually not yeah. a bad transition. Like everything is in combat, right? With Marines, Marines do weird crap. <laughs> is that not true? That, that is an understatement of yeah, <laughs> epic proportions. Epic yeah. proportions. So Marine... put the camera on me for a second. <laughs> Show everybody my safety third T-shirt. Absolutely. You got to go higher. That's that's the Marine right. Corps. That, Safety third. that is the Marine Corps. Safety third. <clears throat> Marines like to eat things like rocks. <laughs> not it's not just crayons. I mean, they, they, I've seen them eat ro rocks for money. I've seen them eat rocks just because. I've seen them eat <laughs> dip you know, spit. Dip spit. <clears throat> uh, bugs. Bugs. Snakes bugs are, are actually good. Snakes are good. You know it helps if they're dead first, but that doesn't it's, stop them. Is he always? I bet you won't. Or watch this. Yeah. yeah. It's one or the other. Yeah. Yeah, I preferred if they call me over first, <laughs> but 
I've, I've seen them jump off of barracks in Okinawa with, you know, with a poncho. Um, I've seen them jump off with the Whoopi with the poncho liner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not exactly the smartest of the bunch on that one. I've told um, this story a couple of times, but you'll get a kick out of it. Spirit World? Yeah. The grunts on my, my, my last Mew I was on, was they were playing Spirit World. They were choking each other out till they passed out. <laughs> and then telling each other stories about it, what, what it was like when they were when unconscious. They're dead for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Not a great plan. Yeah. But well, not a good plan. <laughs> Kill whatever remaining brain cells you have left over from the last Liberty Call. Oh, but uh, but I love it. That's what makes you know. And that's why you know that's why we protect our corpsmen because they protect that's true. us. Yeah. yeah. Something I got to warn my junior corpsmen about a lot is, hey guys, let them do it. Not you. <laughs> Somebody you, has to be an adult in the room. I, I know you want to be a part of the group, but you know. got to be accepted by the club. Yeah. There, there's other ways, guys. There's other yeah. ways. I mean, not that I have ever seen this or anything, but Doc's good for a, you know, a bag of saline on a, on the morning after a big bender. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, anybody who's never done that, raise their hand. Yeah. So, some of us may pack a few extra. <laughs> For the trips, you know. Yeah, uh, that's good stuff. Yeah. So then, uh, how how'd you find yourself uh, being out in the civilian world, then, Doc? Yeah. So I was actually getting ready to go out on the on the town again with the boys, um, doing the workup, uh, renewing my NSW because I'm finally about to go out and do uh, jump and free fall mm. and all this because like everything else. Hey, here's your school seat. Here's your school seat. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, but yeah, we, we, we got to get you out one. the door. Yeah. <clears throat> no, when uh, you get back, though, I promise. Right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my, my time at third, there were so few of us. It, as many IDCs as there were, the op tempo was so fast. Yeah. And typically they send two of you out at a time with a team mm -hmm. uh, because the teams will, will split up or just you know, whatever is going on. A lot of times I was the only guy on the team, again, because of just op tempo and everything. But I'd, I'd go from this team, and as soon as we're coming back, it's, hey, Cross I need deck. you to go here. Yeah. You know, Chief would call <clears throat> me up in the middle of the night, and, hey, uh, I need you to grab your A and B bag and, uh, you know, be at OAJ in the morning We'll get you a plane ticket and everything, and you're going to be taking off here and meeting the team <laughs> out here, or you know, head up to uh, to Moorhead, yeah. to boat basin. Mm -hmm. Boat's going to take you out here. Uh, you know, just real good stuff, and it was great, especially as a single guy at the time, yeah. because you're just racking up the money and you're having a good time. You're loving life, but it definitely wears on your body, mm -hmm. and all the stuff from previous everything just comes up and at the time you know I'm, I'm about 35 I'm I'm an old guy on the team sure everybody else is mm -hmm. you know early 20s <clears> or something and uh, so I'm, I'm getting ready uh, to deploy again doing our workups but I've got to renew my NSW NSW as well uh, the the Naval Special Warfare Physical which you know ev everybody yeah. on the teams has, has got to to do it. and everything yeah. yeah make sure you know <clears throat> Everything from inside the head on down is mm -hmm. is a okay, and uh, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm and I'm gonna head off to school and everything, and meet up with my team again, and we're we're gonna be gone, and something doesn't add up, you know, and uh, we we've got a uh, sob a shrink on board at the units and everything now we've got physical trainers on yep. board mm -hmm. they in special operations they were really really stacked the decks in your favor yeah. to take care of you yeah strength we, and conditioning we've talked yeah. about, about, about that on the show because yeah. yeah. i work at marsa <clears throat> yeah. and uh you know doc green it's it shrink mm -hmm. doc green. Across the yep. you know, yeah greatest thing on earth yeah and all the physical guys yeah it's nice yeah the old taboos are yeah are quickly going away and yeah. stuff and, and it's great it needs to uh but, yeah, they got to talking. They started looking at some of my labs and things and got talking to him, got talking some other stuff. And they're like, you know, some things aren't adding up. Some things are looking funky. And, of course, I'm like, well, you know, Doc, 
it's okay, you know, we'll, we'll sign it off. As soon as I get back from, you know, the trip, we'll take care of it. Just like I've done over all the years, you know, we'll, we'll take care of it on the backside. We'll take yep. care of it on the backside. I just want to out the door and, yeah. and be with the guys. And they said, no, not this time. This is, you know, this isn't looking good. Mm. And uh, so we, we, we had some real heart-to-heart talks about some stuff. And mm. next thing I know... Um, I'm over at uh, Wounded Warrior there at the hospital and all that, and within just over six months or so, eight months, I'm med boarded and separated from service. Yeah, yeah. And you see that? Yeah. I mean, it it was a it was a gut punch. Yeah, it was just you know here you are expecting to do twenty and all this, yeah. and next thing you know, your your team, your boys are out the door, and you're going where's my place in the world now what do mm-hmm. i do now uh you know if something happens to them i'm not there you yeah know, my who's, i, who's I, I, I know the guy people. that's yeah. with them i know the the, the idc yeah. that's with them but he's not me yeah. you know yeah. it, it's it, it's hard. just a it's a hard hard feeling and and it it took quite a while to really you know get myself under control with that yeah. you know mm-hmm. spent a lot of time over at the uh the tbi clinic on base yeah. mm-hmm. i spent a lot of time with the vet center <clears throat> out yeah. in town mm-hmm. uh, which i can't stress enough yeah. how how beautiful that place is for yeah. helping veterans out mm-hmm. shout out to that for yeah. sure yeah i took advantage of it as well yeah, yeah. I, I see them quite a bit and I, I try to help out with them a lot i mm-hmm. i drag veterans screaming by their ear over them all the time to help out. I keep trying to get him to go over there and talk to somebody. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll grab the <laughs> yeah. and go over there. I'll write but, shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll still write shit. So I've, I've got my stamp somewhere. That's hilarious. Right. Hang on, let me just go back to the book for a second because I found this too. Light duty chit. You ready? Oh. <clears throat> Document given by Corman to Marine Buddies authorizing legal malingering to prevent him from the torture of physical exertion. <laughs> if really chummy, possible to get shit laminated in plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it funny? Because it's true. It's true. It's legal true. Legal malingering. <laughs> legal malingering. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome, Doc. We're glad you're still hanging around with us. Yeah. And uh, I think the, the motorcycle club probably helped you quite a bit, too, didn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Because you're around the Marines again. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Yeah, still playing doc. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, it never ends. Yeah. You know, you're, I tell you're people that fun. all the time. The club is the best thing you ever had. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks for coming, buddy. I appreciate, appreciate y'all chatting. having me. Thanks, doc. Yeah.